Mo skunks Jēzus Kristus. Our Savior Lord Jesus, he did a lot of miraculous and wonderful works in the time of his service. And we read about those works in the Bible. But there are few things that he did at the end. He called his two disciples and he said to them, go there to the city, you're going to see a man there who is bringing a, a bowl of water. You go to that man who lives in the house and you tell him that our Lord wants to keep his um, um, feast here. We all know what is this. When it, it's, Mo it's the thing that Moses puts because they were celebrating and they were remembering this big miracle uh, that God brought his um, people out of the Egypt. And a lot of people died in that Egypt. In a, a lot of Egyptians died, but uh, this that did not touch the houses of those um, where where they had covered the houses doors with this blood of the lamb. So Jesus, with his disciples, came together in this room, and they keep this celebration. And this is the place where Jesus uh, put this Holy Communion. In the Christian world, it's a thing that we know really well. And sometimes when we look to the descriptions in Gospel, sometimes we cannot understand this, this Pascha and this thing that Jesus put. Is it the same thing? Is it something in the middle? Did he said something in the middle? What what is it? Those these two things. From my childhood, I have grown up in church, and I need to say that um, from my childhood, I have seen it, and I have celebrated these things. This Holy Communion, I have celebrated it. it. But. Uh, but always I've thought that it's something something that I do not understand, that it's a thing that's some kind of mystery. Maybe it's some kind of secret. And if we look to the Old Testament very carefully, we realize that there is a big accent to how you prepare this meal. The lamb had to be perfect. It had to be in a, a perfect age. You had to uh, cook him on this um, fireplace and bread. Uh, shouldn't have any yeast, and it was a longer time period when you could not keep feast in a house of um, Hebrew family. And we think that maybe these are some kind of things that connect. And of course, of course, those events, it's something that was like prophetical thing that tells us about future. But dear friends, uh, I think that Apostle Paul, he brings in some clearness about these things. He was Hebrew, 100% Hebrew, but he, and he wrote in his um, letters that in his family, his mother was speaking in the language that Jesus was speaking. Um, I forgot, was it Aramean or was it um, Old Greek? Uh, but uh, what other prophets of that time learned? Paul says that it was something that was given to be my, my mother's milk. It was something that I understand so good. But um, Paul wasn't the one in the 12 um, apostles of Jesus. And you know that's so interesting and we may think that maybe it's not so important. Maybe we just need to to look at the things that are, that's written in the gospel, but Paul says that he had this special revelation about his Holy Communion, the meaning of Holy Communion. Um, he received this um, revelation, and we read this in Cor Corinthians chapter 11. He, reads th he uh, writes this to Corinthians, uh, to pagans. And in this letter, 
jaunās darības vai žēlastības laika. He moves the accent to uh, the time of mercy of the New Testament. So up still Paul, he was specific and he specifically separates. There was the time of judgment and there is the time of belief. Time of judgment and time of mercy. And in the time of judgment, you remember there were special people who could serve the Lord at this altar and uh, special people who prepared all the meal and uh, all this um, was really important. But in this time of New Testament and belief, the big accent is to the Word of God and faith. And that's why when we, then Paul, when Paul wrote this letter Corinthians, he is not speaking about the recipe, what this bread should be like. He just says, take a bread. And he is not saying what you should have in this um, cup you're going to drink from. He just says, just take a cup. Dear friends, today I would like to I think that a lot of people who are here and a lot of people who are um, watching on the TV, maybe you have uh, tried Holy Communion for a lot of ten, ten and more times, but Holy Spirit um, I feel that Holy Spirit made me to speak about this Holy Communion today. And I would like to um, say that uh, when we look to some parables, maybe we could understand it more clearly. And one of the parables is that's really similar to this Holy Communion is the thing that uh, Jacob, he wrote in chapter 5 of Jacob. And uh, the story is about um, from verse 13 or 14 of Jacob. He says these words, if there is somebody in the midst of us who is sick, let him invite the old elders of the church and let them come to you, anoint him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And then in the verse 15 he says, listen what he says there in the verse 15. I, I, I'm sure you know these words, but I just want to remind you. And prayer of faith is going to save uh, the sick. So he says, those, if there's somebody, invite the elders of the church and they're going to come in the name of the Lord and anoint him. And he's not going to say that the oil is the thing that's going to heal the person. He says that the faith, that the prayer of faith is the thing that's going to save the person and heal the person, and even if he sinned, he's going to be forgiven. The accent is um, on the word of the Lord and on faith. And oil, it's like, let me say, what, it's, what is the oil? The oil, it's something that gives life to this faith. Because you remember Jacob said that faith without works, it's like it's, like it's dead. I think all of you have seen some dead body. It's just dead. And um, when we work, when we do something according to our faith, it's all going to become alive. Once I told the story about how I physically felt when we in the um, we were in the house, uh, we were living in our old house of three um, three rooms, and then we started work at this um, building of this church house. And there was this one guy; he had this um, a truck, and he was just doing some works. And uh, this guy was sitting in a helmet, and and he was just uh, he could not do a lot of thing for this uh, wall. But I, from above, felt I came out of this room, and I felt that all the atmosphere in this place was totally different. I felt, what made this atmosphere different? It was the work of faith. Later we gave that machine away because it wasn't effective, but when you do something according to your faith, when you do something and you believe in it, it's going to move some powers that you cannot even think about. And I believe that it's the same way with a Holy Communion. 
Let's read what um, uh, Paul wrote to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that in the night which he was betrayed he took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take, eat, this my, is my body which is broken for you, do this in the remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is cup in the new covenant, in my blood, this do, and often as you drink in it, remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till, the, till he comes. And I would like to illustrate it a bit more for you. And I think that um, many of you have um, been through this process before. And this is, you remember, uh, Philip, he sits in this chariot of this finance minister and he, they drive through this desert and he tells him the gospel from the Old Testament but about Jesus Christ. And when they came to this river, this uh, finance minister, he says, you see, here is water. What stands against me so that I could be baptized? There is water. Here I am. Dear friends, you and I sometimes, you and I, if we were sitting in the chariot and we were listening to the conversation, maybe we, and suddenly he says, hey, there's a river. You know what would, what would be the first thought that come in our mind? We would like to go to swim. It's hot, isn't it? You're all sweaty and it's so hot and you just want to go swim. But he, he spoke about getting baptized. What is the difference between just to go swim and uh, to go and get baptized? Philip says it really, um, Philip says, if you believe from all your heart, if you believe from all your heart, then, or this time when we go inside water, it turns into baptism. If you believe, if you believe and you are baptized, you're going to be saved. And again, okay, I remember, maybe not about everybody, I remember your day of baptism, but we went in the, in the pool and the water, water is from Riga city, and you step inside the pool and I ask to you, who is your Lord? And you said, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And of course, I could not go inside your heart, but the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you speak out those words loud, then because of your words of your mouth, I'm going to... And that's why you are baptized. Because... One more example I want to tell you, and that's, I think, is the strongest example. And of course, I do not remember all of you, but there are some. There is one day when two young people come here before the stage. They stand there. And there is the moment when they sa have said yes and yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in big troubles with one word, yes. So they said yes. And then boy, let's start with the husband. He took a, takes a ring and he says, this ring is the symbol of my love. And with this ring, I take you as my wife, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And he takes the ring and puts it in on her finger. You see what's happening here. He believes in his heart. He wished that and he said that out loud. And of course, you can say, yes, yes, there was a pastor who proclaimed them. Yes, of course. That's important also. But actually, the boy from his heart, he believed and he proclaimed with his mouth. And you know I'm going to tell you a secret that nobody knows. When they bought the ring, 
Who took the decision about the ring? Yes, uh, it was the wife. Oh, I like this ring. I want this ring. Okay, okay, okay. So he calculates in his head. He could save up some money on his shoes, so he bought, bought the ring and she showed the ring to everybody and ma took some selfies and then she came home and then she tried the ring and there were no, nothing happened because of that. She tried this ring so many times, but when this boy believed in his heart and he said out loud, they beca she became his wife. Dear friends, that's exactly what happens in the time of Holy Communion. But there is another aspect here. And that thing is, Jesus says, as you drink from this cup and you eat this bread, you believe, and this eating, it's like you do that. It's like you go underwater in the baptism. It's like you get anointed by oil. You believe. You proclaim. As many times as you do this, proclaim. I uh, counted in my time how many times I have um, I have took this uh, Holy Communion. For example, uh, in our church, Mm, cash, usually we have about 12 times in a year Holy Communion. In 10 years we have 120 times this Holy Communion. So I count about 50 years I have actively joined church uh, service. Yes, two years I was in army and then I didn't have any Holy Communion but approximately, approximately 500 times I have took the Holy Communion. How many times in, in a person's life would he um, need to take this Holy Communion? And these words of Jesus uh, put some attention to me. As many times as you do that, proclaim it. And uh, then I think um, about the letter of Judah, and it's written like that in there. So, beloved, getting strong in your holy faith, ask Pray to God in, in Holy Spirit. And when you kind of get strong, get strong, you get strong. Maybe it's just really deep, deep word that you do not understand, but when I looked in English translation, it was written like, I hope nobody is going to laugh about my pronunciation. Building yourselves up. So it's you build yourself up. Pray God in Holy Spirit. When we pray to God in Holy Spirit, we do this process. But the person from a side, he do not understand how it's going to happen. He thinks it's something magical. Maybe it's a, a slowly a process or magical process. But those of you who were in the church service the three months ago, you, when you go from the other side of the house, you will see that there are two small a house is built on the other side of the um, of the this church house. They brought all the bricks and they just built the house. And we thought, oh, it's gonna be for a long time, and they're just gonna build and build. But now it was just three months and one house is ready and they're going to sell apartments. And that's the thing that's happening with us when we pray God in Holy Spirit. But the same thing happens when you and I, when we eat Holy Communion in the right way, when we believe and when we eat and we do this again. And there are some periods of our life when we should do that more often. He should remind himself what has happened to him. And then you take the bread and you eat it. it there is not the power in the bread, but the power is when you believe and you proclaim and you do. Rīgas pilsēt tie cilvēks cēlt. 
It's like you build up the city of Riga. And that's the thing that we're going to do in this morning. With our hearts we believe and with our mouths we proclaim. I have these symbols here before me. Bread in a small cup. Those of you who are home, you can check them also. And those of you who are in this room, you understand that we're not going to rush. We need to slowly find the closest place for us and then, then go there. But of those who are home, I will show you how, how I think is the right way how we should do that effectively. I took this bread and then I would seek in my heart what is the thing, what, what are those important things that he did for me. And then I would like to remember these words that written in, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. And it's written there. He was hurt because of my transgressions and crushed because of my sins. And my judgment was was on him so that I would be saved. And Jesus said, that is my flesh that's given for you. And the thing that he was crushed, it gave me life, it gave me healing. With his stripes I am healed and I receive this healing. I receive that you took all this punishment and I do not need I don't need to be punished anymore I thank you it's such a mercy it's such a gift of mercy and and my name is in the book of life I am a child of God and I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Those of you who are doing it home, you can do that. Let's, let's do it this way, dear friends. Let's do it also here. Those, those of you who are ready, you could also go and take the Holy Communion. They're on the tables. You can see there are four tables on each side for each of them. Tick. Take it. Look with eyes of faith about it, what Jesus has done to you and, and tell it out loud and eat it. If we'll have some time, we're not gonna... We will have enough time. Please do not stand in lines. Just wait a bit. You can sit down and... And then he took the cup and he said, this cup is New Testament. Vilnius, you are a New Testament. John, Peter, Ilze, Liene, you are a New Testament. One door have closed, it's never going to be open. And another door is open, doors of love, doors that are high. Another door that... Your word is in the book of life. Christ took all the punishment so that the blessing of Abraham would come over you. You are blessed over all kind of spiritual blessing in heaven. He is on your side. There is a bright future before you because you have a covenant with God and He is on your side. And I celebrate and I thank you and I believe and I receive this blessing, this covenant of blessing in the blood of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today I would like to speak to you a bit. And although maybe you have the feeling that it's, it's, that, earth, that it's almost done, that we took the Holy Communion, that's it. 
But I would like to say that Holy Spirit put this in my heart so that I would share with this word and that it's a word that's going to help us to go forward. And it's written in Mark chapter 4 from verse 14 uh, forward. Mark verse, uh, cha uh, chapter 4 from verse 14. And we all know that there is this story about Sower who had four different um, grounds. He, he sows the, the seed and uh, traditionally we think that um, those are four different different types of people or uh, four types of people and if you are um, at the roadside then you are the roadside sorry <laughs> and it's not gonna happen to you no way but I believe that Holy Spirit spoke to me and I can um, see that in my life and that's why I um, that's why I can say this also to you. And if you're your believer for a longer time and if you're born in a Christian family, so I think one one to one it's gonna work in your life. So this is a time and cycle. This is a cycle through whom the biggest part of people go through. What what kind of cycle? That in the beginning you were this uh, roadside, then you were the shallow ground. Afterwards you was this ground that took up the words. But okay, let's go slowly through this. What's written here? The sower shows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. My parents were believing people and from my childhood I was brought to um, church and Sunday school and I joined all these things but you know what I want to tell you that in the beginning when my parents told me about God about Jesus about sa saving what they told me it wasn't the same category about uh, if they spoke that I need to eat vegetables or I need to clean my teeth or I do some kind of other good things it wasn't the same category Category. And I listened to it and I had no excitement. And when I came to church service, I came just because my parents went there and what I'm going to do alone and I'm going to sit home alone. No, I just went to church service with them and I sat there and I was poking my nose and I was just sleeping in the time of church service and I just tried to survive till the end of the church service. I was casual wayside. And when there was somebody who spoke to me personally, maybe there was this, we had this family friend, Laimonis, he always tried to just say something to me, and I, and you know, maybe you also have met some really intelligent, really tolerant, really wonderful people who are open to everything. You're just like, yes, say, say. There was this one pastor, Baptist pastor, who, when, when, uh, when I told him about uh, the um, baptism of Holy Spirit, he said, yes, I'm open. I'm open to it. I'm not... Um, if God needs it, let him come to me. I'm not going to put him out. But we know that with this attitude, nothing is going to happen in your life because today you hear the word and tomorrow you're going to forget about it. And we have this... And I have this feeling that... If it was something really important, I would remember it, you know, if I do not know you, you're nothing to me, you know, it's from the same series. Um. Uh, you're sti still in the category? Okay, I was person like that. And I would like to say that I think each one of us, we heard the word for the first time and it gets stolen. And then again, we heard it for the first time. But do God speak to us more than once in our lifetime? You know, Jesus said in a place um, this uh, parable about uh, Heavenly Father and Garden and um, some uh, servants. He sent this one servant to this garden and then he sent his son to the garden. And this father should have realized a bit faster because they they hit this one uh, one servant and then they hit the other servant. 
and another thing you zinu kā jūs tapāt you know how you were made spermatozīts savienojās ar olšūnu kuram nekas nav zināms par tādu who does not know how people are made do you know cik daudz spermatozoīdu how many sperm is palaistajā maratonā let free in this marathon so that one just Uh, reach the end. Yeah, paldies, Thank you. There is a doctor, husband of doctor, who knows. Listen, if I was God, I would say five. Five spermatozoids, it's enough. Only one we need. If I was really rich, I would say, okay, 50. 50, we need 50. But you know what God has done? He said it in one time. More than five million spermatozoids are released and only one will reach the end. And I, I think that God really speaks to us many times. He does not give up. He sends his word. He, he throws the seed. And if you're the wayside, for the one time he says it to you and again and again. And that's how we reach the second category of believers. Okay, I would not say that the first category is believers. They're just people that are... Um, Uh, walking through the world like cats of university. One day they come to the lecture of atheism. For the second day they're in the lecture of theology and they like everywhere. They're like really open people this first category, people who feel good everywhere. But listen, what's the second ha second category? These likewise are the, the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or per persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Also in my life, there was a time like this. It's like like you start to believe and you say like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it's logically. Yes, it should be like that. Yes, God is. Yes. Yes, there is eternity. Yes, there is Jesus. Yes, there is better. Is this type of person, is he saved? It's really, it's a thing that he, he says yes. He even puts some effort to find out some things uh, more about his faith, but, but that's it. You know, I would say it's like the theorem of Pit Pythagoras' theorem. We had some time to to understand this theorem, mathematical theorem, but we do not need it. Theorem of we need it just to Pythagorean theorem. So, dear friends, I had this time in my life when um, right answers were important. So, right answers. There were sheep, there were stars. You cannot know everything about Bible, but then you have the feeling that you have feeling that that's the that's the, your big faith. But as we all know, that in this stony ground, that those roots they do not go deep. It uh, it does not change you if you know everything. It doesn't change your life. And I would like to say that it's a time when you are actually not saved. Because saved, you remember even John the Baptist, he said, Hey, you came here, so let me see your fruits of... Uh, Your life needs to change. And then we speak about the third category, about which one I would like to speak more today. Are you, are you away from the wayside? 
the one who looks in uh, your TV home and you look with me with your open uh, eyes and you say, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. But if you are the wayside, you have no fruit. If you are this shallow person, maybe you have this feeling that everything is okay, but there is no result in your life like in this story. And then we come to this third part. And there are a lot of, a lot of um, believers in this part. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the words, so they listen, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering in, cho in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. These are people who really let these roots grow deep in their hearts, and it's deeper than just um, above. Those are people who really say, Jesus, I give my life to you. Jesus, I want to go with you. You are my Lord. Lord, there is just only one but. But life is so hard. Life is so difficult, so many challenges and so many uh, serious um, dangers and enemies that they just take this responsibility on their own shoulders and they bring it. And um, before it was a bit more easier, they had to take care only about their sel themselves, but now they need to take care so that they go to church and those so that they give some offerings. And when they have some really real and big challenges of life, uh, God's word goes in the second, second plan for them, second place for them. And they say, I need to go through this. I'm the one who, who takes and um, makes the result. I'm the one who wins the fight. My blood and my sweat is going to uh, give me the victory. And you know those people, they do not trust God because what if, what if God's word doesn't work? What if he don't help me? You remember when how, how God spoke to Abraham? He spoke to Abraham in 1 Moses chapter 12, verse 2. It's written there. I will make you a big nation. He is not telling to him you're going to become big, big nation. But he says, I will make you a big nation. I will bless you. And I will make your name big. I. It's like, it's like I and Normans would speak to, um, uh, would spoke to do something together, but Normans would say, I will bring, I will, I will do that, I will, who's going to do that? Normans going to do that. I do not need to worry about those things anymore because Normans took responsibility about those things. And I shouldn't bring, uh, the, I shouldn't worry about those things because he said he's going to do that. And you see here, here is where, this is the point where it begins the big, deep Christianity. When you trust God at the point that you are ready to risk your own life, you're ready to risk that He's going to do it because He is faithful. And this is really important um, decision when you come to this place. That all these deceitfulness of riches and all kind of desires, they put this heaviness on your shoulders. That you need to put this heaviness to His shoulders and you need to trust Him. Beloved friends, and this morning I would like to speak to you who are sitting here in this room. And maybe faith is deep in your heart. Maybe you really think about your faith, but you do not trust Him in those big life turns and big life challenges. You think that if you're going to like in the smart saying but saying that's full of unbelief like it said if you want something to be done then do it yourself 
But the truth is that if you want something to be done, trust it to God. Truly trust it to God. Of course, I'm not saying that you're not going to do anything, but I'm saying that you believe and you know that He will do this till the end. And then starts the next next part and I believe that I am this next part and this is when you trust when you believe and you put and you realize that with your own mind and with your resources you cannot do this you cannot solve these situations and that's the challenge towards which one God is calling you and he says let's play this game for a bigger bigger things trust me i am your helper i am gonna do these things in your life those things that you cannot do yourself because if we believe ourselves and if we play in the zone of comfort just stay in the zone of comfort we're not gonna fulfill our calling we're just gonna have this shaking hand and we're just gonna be afraid that we're aren't we giving away too much but if you trust him then you have this next point that's the good ground and in this good ground remember there was a there is a person who trusts who truly trusts who truly risks with everything in the world and you think oh god i'm a fanatic I cannot tell anybody, but I'm. I trust you for this healing. I cannot tell anybody that I trust for. If people would know what I trust you in, they would say that I'm crazy or that I'm a zombie. But you know what Bible says? It says that. It says that. Thirty times. Only 30% of fruit, 30 fold. So I would like to say, dear friend, you have a place to grow. Please. Um, my, the beginning of my faith life uh, didn't have like an uh, amazing beginning. It wa wasn't amazing, the beginning. And, um, oh, you're this wayside. No. And not just a casual wayside, but this big road wayside where everybody walks and everybody... Nothing, you can hear nothing, but thanks to God, God... God continued to throw his seed until one day I started to respect that more and more and more. And I'm not yet, um, I haven't yet finished my, my road, but I would like to speak to you, my dear brother and sister, God, some, God has something more to you. If you have experienced something, I do not know how to say it. Once I prayed about a person and I, he had some uh, health issues and I was so um, seriously standing and I was praying and then Holy Spirit told me, why, why are you praying so seriously like he is sinking? He is really lucky with this situation and he can deal with it and um, I realized that this is um, something about spiritual results and then later I realized that uh, that in 30 percent he sees the result but that's not it I would like to remind you that in Ephesi Ephesians chapter um, God has written that God who works with hi his power in us he can do much more, much more than we can imagine or pray. God, who works with his power inside of your life. Um, are those finances or is that health? Is it some other sphere in your life? He can do more. Just do not stop there. Just do not stop in this wayside. And don't stop when you're shallow there. Just throw out all the fears and all the cares and just go forward because God has more. God has more for you. 
and you will see greater God's power. It's going to be 30-fold and 60-fold and 100 times more. 